What's going on guys, Justin here and welcome back to our 14th example video following our course on proof writing. Now today's example video is going to be on proof by induction. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first example. So for this example, we want to show that 3 plus the sum as i goes from 1 to n of 3 plus 5i is equal to n plus 1 times 5n plus 6 all over 2. So a reminder that to do these inductive proofs, you first want to prove a base case, which we can kind of view as our first domino in a domino line. And then after that, we will prove our induction step, which is to prove that the kth case implies the k plus first case, which is basically showing that each domino is sufficiently close to knock over the next one. And the combination of these two is sufficient to prove all cases. So let's go ahead and get into our base case. So for this example, we're going to have our base case be when n is equal to 1. So when n is equal to 1, we'll have this for our sum. We'll have 3 plus 3 plus 5 times 1. And that's going to equal 2 times 5 plus 6 over 2. And we can see that these twos will cancel, and 5 plus 6 will give us 11. And this over here on the left-hand side will give us 8 plus 3, which is also 11. So that proves our base case. So next, we're going to want to write out our induction hypothesis. So our induction hypothesis is going to be, suppose that 3 plus the sum as i goes from 1 to k of 3 plus 5i is equal to k plus 1 times 5k plus 6 over 2. Great. So next we want to consider the k plus first case or the next case. So we're going to consider 3 plus the sum as i goes from 1 to k plus 1 of 3 plus 5i. So let's go ahead and write out how these terms will expand here. So we'll have 3 plus our sum in the first term for our sum is going to be 3 plus 5 times 1. Then we'll have plus 3 plus 5 times 2, etc. up to our kth case. So that will be 3 plus 5k. Then we've added in our k plus first case here. So we'll have 3 plus 5 times k plus 1. And I want you to notice that what I'm underlining in blue here is just our induction hypothesis. So we can replace it with what I've underlined here above. So let's go ahead and make that substitution. So we'll have k plus 1 times 5k plus 6 over 2 plus plus 3 plus 5k plus 5. Great. And so we want to show that what we've written out here on the left is equal to k plus 2 times 5 times k plus 1 plus 6 over 2. Great. So let's go ahead and get a common denominator for this term right here, and then we'll combine our terms. So we're going to do that by multiplying what I just underlined by 2 over 2. So once we do that, we'll have k plus 1 times 5k plus 6 plus 2 times 5k plus 8, all over 2. Great. And so from here, I'm just going to manipulate our numerator, um, which I'll denote by this blue arrow. And then we'll add our denominator back in once we have that taken care of. So let's go ahead and multiply out k plus 1 and 5k plus 6. So when we do that, we'll have 5k squared plus 6k plus 5k plus 6. And then we can add in our second term there, which will be plus 10k plus 16. So let's go ahead and combine like terms. And I'll go ahead and use this blue arrow again to show that we're just working with the numerator here. So we'll have 5k squared plus... 21k plus 22. And so we can easily factor that to show that that is equal to k plus 2 times 5k plus 11. And then I will go ahead and add our denominator back in. So that will give us k plus 2 times 5k plus 11 all over 2. We can see that that is exactly what we wanted to show, which completes this proof by induction. So let's go ahead and get into our second example. All right, so for this example, we want to prove that 6 divides n cubed minus n for all n greater than or equal to 0. 
So let's begin with our base case. So in this case, since we have n is greater than or equal to zero, we'll just make zero our base case. So go ahead and write out that this is our base case and that n is equal to zero. So that will give us zero cubed minus zero, which is of course zero. And in fact, six does divide zero, um, trivially so. So that confirms our base case. Now let's go ahead and write out our induction hypothesis. I'm gonna denote that IH. I just realized I did that in the last example and didn't explain it, but there you go. So this will be our induction hypothesis. So for, so we want to suppose that for K greater than or equal to zero, we have that six divides K cubed minus K. Okay. So now we want to consider our next case. So we're going to consider k plus one cubed minus k plus one. And before we get into our next case, I wanna go ahead and note here on this induction hypothesis that this means that we can write k cubed minus k as six a, where a is a natural number. Normally I would say integer, but we are dealing with only positive numbers here, so I think that's okay. So let's go ahead and cube k plus one here and then combine our terms. So once we cube our k plus one here, we will get that we have k cubed plus three k squared plus three k plus one. And then from our second term, we have a minus k minus one. And I want you to notice that this minus k and k cubed is the same as our induction hypothesis over here. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that by 6a. So that's gonna give us 6a plus 3k squared plus 3k, which we can factor as follows. We'll have 6a plus 3k times k plus one. And now I'm going to be using a fact. So let me go ahead and write that out. We'll, we'll be using the fact that the product of two consecutive natural numbers is divisible by two. So that means that we can write k times k plus one as two times b for some natural number b. So let's go ahead and make that substitution and we can finish this proof off. So we will have six a plus three times two b which is of course equal to 6a plus 6b. And we can factor a six out of that to show that this whole thing is divisible by six. We will have six times a plus b. And thus we have proved our induction step and finished this proof by induction. So let's go ahead and get into our third example. Great, so for this one, we want to show that the sum as i goes from one to n of one over two i minus one times two i plus one is equal to n over two n plus one. So let's begin with our base case. And our base case will be when n is equal to one. So that is going to be one over two times one minus one times two times one plus one. And that is equal to one over two times one plus one which is equal to one third. We can see that we'll get one third from our left-hand side there as well as the first term in the denominator will give us a one and the second term will give us a three. So we'll have one over three there as well. So this confirms our base case. That is a lousy check mark. So let's go ahead and write out our induction hypothesis now. So our induction hypothesis is going to be Suppose that the sum as i goes from one to k of one over two i minus one times two i plus one is equal to k over two k plus one. And we're going to go ahead and consider our next case. So consider the sum as i goes from one to k plus one of one over 2i minus 1 times 2i plus 1. And we want to show that that is equal to k plus 1 over 2k plus 3. So to proceed, I'm going to go ahead and note that we can write our sum in the following way. We can write it as the sum as i goes from 1 to k of 1 over 2i minus 1 times 2i plus 1 plus just our k plus first term, which will be one over two times k plus one minus one 
times two times k plus one plus one. Great. And I want you to go ahead and notice that this first sum is just our induction hypothesis. So we can make the following substitution that I've outlined here in blue. So we can replace this first part with k over 2k plus 1. And then we will add our second term in. We'll have 1 over, and let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. We will have 2k plus 1. And then for our second one, we will have 2k plus 1. Three. Great. So let's go ahead and combine our terms here by getting a common denominator. We're going to multiply the left hand side by 2k plus 3 over 2k plus 3. So that will give us k times 2k plus 3 plus 1 over 2k plus 1 times 2k plus 3. So let's go ahead and multiply out our numerator there. So we'll have 2k squared plus 3k plus 1 over 2k plus 1 times 2k plus 3. Great. And we want to notice that we can factor our numerator as follows. We'll have 2k plus 1 times k plus 1. And that will be over 2k plus 1 times 2k plus 3. But it's easy to see that these 2k plus 1s will cancel out, which will leave us with k plus 1 over 2k plus 3, which is exactly what we wanted to prove. So that finishes the proof for our induction step, and that finishes this proof by induction. For this one, we want to prove that the sum of 1 over the first n squares is less than or equal to 2 minus 1 over n. And I think we have a bit of a typo here. This 1 over 4 should be a 1 over 9, like that. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and proceed by doing our base case. So our base case for this one is just going to be when n is equal to 1, which will give us 1 over 1. And is that less than or equal to 2 minus 1? It is in fact equal to 2 minus 1, which is sufficient to prove our base case. Great. So now we'll write out our induction hypothesis. So our induction hypothesis is going to be that 1 over 1 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 9 plus all the way up to 1 over k squared is less than or equal to 2 minus 1 over k. Great. And now we're going to go ahead and consider our next case. So we're going to consider the following sum where we have 1 over 1 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 9 plus all the way up to 1 over k squared, and then we're going to add in one more term, which is 1 over k plus 1 quantity squared. And we want to show that this is less than or equal to 2 minus 1 over k plus 1. Great. So from our induction hypothesis, we already know that this part is less than or equal to 2 minus 1 over k. So let's go ahead and make that substitution. So we'll have 2 minus 1 over k plus 1 over k plus 1 squared. Okay, great. So next, let's go ahead and combine our k terms here by getting a common denominator, which we're going to do by multiplying the 1 over k by k plus 1 quantity squared over k plus 1 quantity squared and multiplying the right one by k over k. So let's go ahead and see what we get when we do that. Great. So once we do that, we will get 2 minus k plus 1 quantity squared plus k over k times k plus 1 quantity squared. And so now what we're going to want to do is make something that is larger than what we have here and show that that is still less than or equal to 2 minus 1 over k plus 1. So let's go ahead and note the following, that 2 minus k plus 1 squared plus k over k times k plus 1 squared is less than or equal to 2 minus k plus 1 squared over k times k plus 1 squared. And that's because by removing the k in the numerator, we have made what we are subtracting smaller and therefore made the total bigger. So now we can go ahead and cancel out these k plus 1 squareds, and that will give us 2 minus 1 over k. And so from here we want to note that 2 minus 1 over k 
is less than or equal to two minus one over k plus one. Because by adding that plus one in the denominator there, we have reduced what we are removing from two and therefore made our difference larger. So if we look at what we have on our extreme right hand and left hand sides, we will notice that we have proven the inequality that we wanted to show. And thus we have completed our proof by induction. Great, so let's go ahead and get into our next proof. Okay, great. So for this one, we actually have kind of a long equality here. We want to show that the sum as i goes from one to n of negative one to the i times i times i plus one is equal to one fourth times minus one plus minus one to the n times one plus four n plus two times n squared. So let's start with our base case. So our base case is going to be when n is equal to one. So let's start with our left-hand side here. We will have negative one to the one, which is just negative one, times one, which is just one, times one plus one, which is two. So we can see that that will give us negative two. And on the right-hand side, we will have one fourth times this big thing we have here on the left. So the first one will give us a negative one, and then negative one to the one will just be negative one. So we'll have another minus one there. And that's going to be times one plus four times one, which is four plus two times one squared, which is just two. And so we can see if we simplify what we have in the parentheses there, we'll have one plus four plus two, which is seven. So we'll have negative seven minus, so we'll have a negative one minus negative seven, which is negative eight, and that's all over four, which will give us negative two, which completes our proof of this base case here. So let's go ahead and write out our induction hypothesis next. And so for our induction hypothesis, we are going to suppose that we have the sum as i goes from one to k of negative one to the i times i times i plus one is equal to one over four times negative one plus negative one to the k times one plus four k plus two k squared. Great, and so now we want to consider our next case. So we're going to consider when we have the sum as i goes from one to k plus one of negative one to the i times i times i plus one. And I want to note that we can write that as the following. We can write it as the sum as i goes from one to k of negative one to the i times i times i plus one plus just our k plus first terms. So that will be plus negative one to the k plus one times k plus one times k plus two. Great. So from here, I want to note that we can make the following substitution. We can substitute this right-hand side of our induction hypothesis in for this first term here, and we will get the following. We will have one fourth times negative one plus negative one to the k times one plus four k plus two k squared and then we'll have plus the rest of what we had from our k plus first case. We'll have plus negative one times k plus one times k plus one times k plus two. Great. And so we can bring in the term I underlined here into our product on the left by multiplying it by four. So once we do that, we'll get one fourth times negative one plus negative one to the k times one plus four k plus two k squared. And so that will be plus negative one to the k plus one times four times k plus one times k plus two. And from here, I'm going to factor out negative one to the k plus one power. And so when we do that, we'll get one fourth times negative one out front like usual. And then we will have plus negative one to the k plus first. And that will be multiplied into, we will pick up a negative for our terms on this side as we have factored out a negative one to the k plus one from that. And that will be the same as multiplying by one over negative one. So we will have negative one minus four k minus two k squared. And then for our other term, we will have plus four times k plus one times k plus two. Great. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a blue arrow to show that we're just gonna work with what's inside these parentheses here so I don't have to write out that front part every single time. And so let's begin by multiplying our k plus one, k plus two, and four out. So that we will have four times k squared plus three k plus two, and that will be minus two k squared minus four k minus one. And then we can multiply that four out, which will give us four k squared plus 12k plus eight minus 2k squared minus 4k minus 1. So let's go ahead and combine like terms there. So that will give us 2k squared plus 8k plus 7. And so from here I want to note that what we want inside these parentheses for this part is as follows. So note we want 1 plus 4 times k plus 1 plus 2 times k plus 1 squared for this part here. So we're going to go ahead and factor it to make that happen. So first let's split, out our, split up our 1 out front. So we will have 1 plus, and then we want our 4 times k plus 1. So we need to take another 4 from our 7 and 4k. So we'll have plus 4 times k plus 1 there. And that will leave us with the following. We'll have plus 2k squared plus 4k plus 2. Great. And I'll draw a red arrow to show that we are factoring this quadratic here. We can start by factoring out a 2, and that will give us k squared plus 2k plus 1. And that is equal to 2 times k plus 1 squared. That will give us the final value for what we have in our parentheses there. We will have 1 plus 4 times k plus 1 plus 2 times k plus 1 quantity squared. And we can see if we substitute that back into our full thing, we will have 1 fourth times negative 1 plus negative 1 to the k plus first times 1 plus 4 times k plus 1 plus 2 times k plus 1 quantity squared. And that is exactly what we wanted to show to complete this proof by induction. That was a long one. So let's go ahead and get into our last example for this example video. So for this last one, we have a product. We want to show that the product as i goes from 2 to n of 1 minus 1 over i squared is equal to n plus 1 over 2n. So let's go ahead and begin like we always do with our base case. So for this one, our base case is going to be when n is equal to 2. As we can see, that is when our i starts. Our i starts at 2 in this case instead of 1 or 0. So that will be when n is equal to 2, like I said. And so when n is equal to 2, we will have the following. We will have 1 minus 1 over 2 squared, which is 4. So that will give us 3 over 4 for this left-hand side. And that's going to be equal to... 2 plus 1 over 4, which is of course also equal to 3 over 4. So that completes our proof of this base case here. So let's go ahead and write out our induction hypothesis. So our induction hypothesis is going to be, suppose that we have the following product. We have the product as i goes from 2 to k of 1 minus 1 over i squared is equal to k plus 1 over 2k. And from here, we are going to consider our next case. So consider the following product, where we have the product as i goes from 2 to k plus 1 of 1 minus 1 over i squared. So just like before, we are going to express this as the product of our induction hypothesis in the k plus first multiple from the product. So we can write this as the product as i goes from 2 to k of 1 minus 1 over i squared. And that's going to be times 1 minus 1 over k plus 1 quantity squared. Great. And so just like before, I'm going to underline in blue to show the substitution we are making with our induction hypothesis here. So that means we can write our k plus first case the following way, where we have k plus 1 over 2k times 1 minus 1 over k plus 1 quantity squared. 
we want to show that this is equal to the following, where we have k plus 2 over 2k plus 2. Great. So to do that, let's go ahead and multiply this out. We will get k plus 1 over 2k minus k plus 1 over 2k times k plus 1 quantity squared. Great. And so let's go ahead and combine like terms by multiplying the left term by k plus 1 quantity squared over k plus 1 quantity squared. And when we do that, we will get that we have k plus 1 cubed in the numerator minus k plus 1. And that will all be over 2k times k plus 1 squared. And so right away, now that we've combined like terms, we can see that we can cancel out a k plus 1 in the denominator with those in the numerator. So this 2 will become a 1, this will just become a 1, and this 3 will become a 2. So what will that leave us with? That will leave us with k plus 1 squared minus 1 over 2k times k plus 1. Let's go ahead. So let's go ahead and multiply out our numerator and our denominator. And when we do that, we will see that we have k squared plus 2k. And our 1s will cancel in the numerator. And then our denominator, we will have 2k squared plus 2k. And so we can factor out a k from our numerator and our denominator and cancel them. And we will get our following. And we will get the following. We will have k plus 2 over 2k plus 2. And if you recall, that is exactly what we wanted to show to complete this proof by induction. So that finishes this last proof off, and that is a good place to stop.